Well, just because the holiday season is here and our schedules are going to get pretty filled and a lot of business is going to be happening, it doesn't mean that we get an excuse to not be on mission for Jesus. But, but how do we do that? That's today on Mission and Likeness. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Mission and Likeness. Uh, thanks for joining us here. Uh, my name is Scott, and it has been great to record uh, some of these first couple of episodes. If you missed our last episode, I was on with uh, Pastor Brian Curdy, who's a really good friend of mine and uh, one of the pastors at my church. And so got to chat with him uh, about burnout in the church and what it's gone through recently. And so go check out that episode uh, if you'd be interested. It would it's a, it's a really good conversation. So today we're going to be talking about the holidays. And uh, this week, as of the recording, it's the day before Thanksgiving. Uh, So tomorrow we have lunch plans, we have dinner plans, and then we have a 7 a.m. flight out of Pittsburgh flying to Dallas, and we'll be there all day Friday, and then we're heading to Oklahoma on uh, Saturday for a friend's wedding. And then we're back to Texas Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we fly home. And then it's December 1st, which is the start of what our church is doing for Advent, which we are calling Advent Focus. We're going through um, a Christmas we didn't expect. uh, And that is a 24-day devotional where it starts on December 1st. And it is a daily reading that you can do with your family, and that includes your kids. Uh, you can bring other families into it. You can bring friends into it, neighbors, all of that. And so we get back December 1st, um, and then we're right into the thick of it with Christmas parties, and we still have some birthday parties to go to. We have uh, other activities that we need to do. We have uh, work things, you know, with the companies. And visiting in time with the kids, and it is just a busy, busy season. And I know for me, that one stirs up a lot of anxiety, especially the traveling that we're going to be doing. Um, Traveling has not been an easy thing for me uh, recently, uh, the last few years, but but it's something that you need to fight through, you need to get through, and you need to identify in, in your life you know, what, what's causing uh, those struggles. But that's a different topic for another episode. So the thing that I want to talk about today is, is kind of on this line of thinking. And it is, are we, when we get into a really busy season... We tend to lose sight of what our mission is, and and we tend to slack off in prayer sometimes, or we slack off in in being in God's Word, or we slack off in our discipleship because we're busy and we can't just find time to to work our schedules to get everything exactly how it needs to be in order to find time for it. And so for a lot of years, I kind of just bought into that and said— well, you know, I'm busy, and so we can catch up after the holidays. And I found myself putting so much emphasis on getting the holidays right by going to the right parties and spending the right time and just having fun and make sure there's gifts and wrapping up projects at work that the holidays really haven't been a whole lot of fun lately. You know, it's been very consumer-driven, making sure, and this year especially, you know, as we are seeing, you know, companies striving uh, or really uh, encouraging to do early shopping. You know, Black Friday sales have been out for a few weeks now. And because of the, the shortages with um, supplies and shipping delays and the cost of things just being through the roof anymore, um, I mean, the cost of things has gone dramatically up. We, uh, we're, we're remodeling our, the lower family room in our house and you know, a few, when, when we lived in our previous house, you know, we, we got carpeting and we did all this stuff and we thought it was a reasonable price. And now getting just our lower family room is half the cost almost of, you know, carpeting an entire floor of our previous home. 
And so just the cost of things have gone up. And I mean, not that you would necessarily get carpeting for a Christmas gift. Anyways, the cost of things are going up, which makes people feel like, oh, we need to get stuff now because I don't think this stuff is going to be either available or will, it will be any cheaper, you know, down the road. And with shipping delays, who knows when things are actually going to be coming in. But that doesn't mean that we get a pass on the mission. So if you don't know what I mean by the mission, I would really encourage you to go back and listen to the pilot episode. And the mission is how we respond to the gospel, what Jesus has directed us as those who are believers in him, those who follow Jesus, we have a specific mission in this life. And that is to share the gospel by loving one another and leading others to the gospel. We don't have the power to save anyone, but through the power of the spirit that dwells in us, we have the ability We have the power of the spirit. We have the guidance of the spirit to disciple others, to witness to others, to share our testimony with others in the hope that the spirit will then draw them to faith, bring them to repentance and faith. Because you can't just believe in the gospel. You can't just say, I believe that Jesus died for me without repenting of your sin and turning away from your sin. So what I, w- what I want to kind of lay out here, and, and we have a guest coming up at the, at the bottom of the show to, to talk more about this. And so we're going to get into a little bit more detail later on, but I, I kind of want to lay this kind of thing, this kind of uh, premise. Instead of just focusing on filling your schedule and making sure that you are fulfilling all of the obligations and duties, take a few minutes each night and be intentional with your schedule. Look for opportunities within your schedule to disciple, to witness, to rest. Resting during the holiday season is kind of... um, a no-no, it seems. Like, anyone who's trying to rest during the holiday season, like, gets looked at and judged a little bit. But you need to create time for rest. Now, how, how do we incorporate discipleship in a busy schedule? It's that, it's that intentionality. So if we're being intentional, if we are looking at our schedule and saying, okay, so I need to make... Christmas cookies, see if you have a friend or someone that you are in the midst of life with, that you are following Jesus with, who can come over and make cookies with you. And while you're making cookies, you can be having conversations around who God is, what he's done, how you're responding to it, what you're struggling with to see the goodness in Jesus, how in this particular context of Advent, what does the second coming mean? You know, with, with Christmas, we look back to the first coming of Jesus as we anticipate the second coming of Jesus. You know, Jesus isn't reborn every, every Christmas. We celebrate the birth. We recognize the birth. But we don't celebrate necessarily that he was reborn. Instead, now the anticipation. So the anticipation before was the birth of Christ. Now the anticipation is the second coming of Christ. Because our mission here on earth ends either when God calls us home or when Jesus comes again. So look for those opportunities. If you're out at the grocery store, look for someone to to talk to. If you're out in the workplace and someone is struggling, ask the Spirit to encourage you to speak a word of truth to them. And, and I don't just mean, um, you know, sugarcoating or watering down the gospel. Like obviously you need to, you need to think through where that person is and where they are and how they are viewing God. 
you know, so if you are coming up to someone and they are a straight up atheist, you know, I wouldn't suggest hitting them over the head with like Romans 323, trying to get them to convert, like making them feel worse about themselves immediately is probably not the way, but you do need to figure out where they are. And that could start out with a conversation, just what are you struggling with? with? Why is that um, something that you are passionate about? Maybe it's an identity issue. Maybe it is a family issue. But the gospel speaks to each and every situation that we find ourselves in. Every single one. There's not a single situation in life where the gospel isn't going to speak to it. And not just speak to it, but conquer it. I recently taught in our uh, Sunday school elective that I helped teach in, and we were talking through uh, Mark 11, and it was it was talking about the the story of the fig tree and how all of these people, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all of the temple people and uh, even the people coming to to the Passover celebration, they were all looking like they were doing the right things. They were offering the sacrifices. They were singing praises. All of that looked good. And so Jesus goes up to a fig tree that looked like it should have been in, uh, should have been producing fruit. It had big leafy leaves on it. And it looked like it should have been in, in fruit, but it was barren. And so Jesus curses the, the fig tree. And the point of the story when Jesus is talking to his disciples is he says, have faith in God. So these people have, the people have developed their own man-made system that, that cater to their wants and their needs and their desires. And our mission isn't to cater to ourselves. Our mission is to first cater to God and depend on God and then to take that to other people. So our strength comes from God, not from our systems that we build up. But we've gotten really really good at building up systems. We've gotten really, really good at distracting ourselves by putting so many different activities and points on our schedule. I mean, if you look at, if you look at my schedule, every day has a dot. And then if you open that, each day has multiple dots in it. But where I strive to make those dots intentional and not just busy is where I make space to rest. I make space to pause. I make space to connect with a friend. I make space to get into God's word, to say a prayer, to slow down a little bit. And I'm not great at it, but it's something that I'm trying to work towards. And I would encourage you to work towards it as well. The last thing that I struggle with, especially as a business owner, is saying no and being honest. Uh, just this past week, we, we had a couple of clients reach out to us and said, hey, do you have time to do this? And you know, specifically this week, I'm only working three days, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then, like I said, Thursday's Thanksgiving, and then we're traveling for uh, five days. And my problem is I... I said, yeah, I, I can fit you in. And what does that do to my schedule? You know, I look at it from a financial uh, perspective. Yeah, I'm going to make that money. But at what other cost? The fact that I am overly busy neglecting my family for some money. Missing out on opportunities with my kids. We were, we were playing trouble last night and... Um, our, our kid, our boys love to play uh, board games. And so Trouble is one of the ones that we uh, play very frequently. And we, we finished up wrapping up and then we made some hot chocolate. And while the hot chocolate was heating up on the stove, we, my wife and I were just sitting on the, the couch and we were listening to some Christmas music. And it was just so relaxing as the boys are wrestling on the floor and my wife and I are just sitting on the couch listening to some good Advent music and just being thankful for where we are. 
creating little spaces like that will go a long way. It's not that we have to be lazy, but we do have to find some space. We'll be talking a little bit more with Chris Kansky coming up in just a second. All right, so make a list. Five people that you have pretty deep relationship with that you know follow Jesus and two people that don't follow Jesus. And over the course of the next month, I want you to make an intentional uh Make it intentional to reach out, stay connected with them. And for those unbelieving folks, try to lead them to a gospel conversation of who God is, what he's done, and how we are to respond to him. Chris Cancy is coming up next. Are you a content creator that has a desire or are already creating gospel-centered content like podcast, music, film, or blog posts? If you are, we would love to collaborate with you here at Love Local. If that's something that interests you, head over to lovelocalpa.com backslash partner and fill out our creative partner form, and then we can reach out to you and hopefully get a new project started. I am here with a good friend of mine, Chris Kansky, and we're going to be talking a little bit about busyness and how do we take our busyness and make it more intentional. So, Chris, welcome to Mission and Lightness. Scott, thanks. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Now, Chris is, uh, he's originally from this area, correct? I am, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But now you reside in central Ohio, essentially? Southeastern Ohio. Southeastern? Yeah, central-ish, I guess. Okay. Cambridge, it, Ohio. Cambridge. Sounds, sounds sophisticated. It does. It's know. not nearly as sophisticated as it sounds. But. So I, the reason I wanted to have Chris on is, one, I really appreciate how he thinks and processes through things. And one of the things that I have been noticing, especially in, in my life, like I talked about earlier, is the fact that we have almost begun to find our identity in our busyness. And so what's the problem with being busy? Yeah. Um, and I mean, first of all, I absolutely agree with you. I think, I think particularly in, in business, it's almost a badge of honor to be crazy busy to be overly busy to you know i have so much going on i can barely barely keep it all together you know um and i think you know it it doesn't it it doesn't make room for for god you know it doesn't make room for jesus i think that's the primary problem you know um you know our 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 faith is is primarily first and foremost about a relationship with with right. a living person, you know, of Jesus Christ. And if we're not, you know, it's 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 almost cliche, but you know, if I if I claim to have a relationship with with a with a friend or with my wife and I'm not and I'm not spending time with her, you know, how how strong is that relationship really? Um so I think that's the primary problem with busyness is that it is that it um I know if I'm just if I'm just going on autopilot I'm doing that I'm doing that on my own strength you right. know there's there's no deeper meaning right right yeah yeah and it's it's those that it's those that um and I you know I do this very imperfectly but you know those that those that wait on the Lord and those that depend on him for their strength, that's where we can be. Um, that's where we can be effective ministers of the gospel, you know, in whatever we're doing. Um, but if we're not, if we're not, you know, rooted and grounded in that relationship with Him, then we, then we, I, I know, I just kind of automatically start operating in my own strength. So if that makes sense. So how do you see? How do you see that? 
played out in our, our world today? Like, do you see that a lot of Christians are falling into, in, into that season of just busyness or I guess into that deception that right. busyness is where we're most productive? Right, right. Yeah, I think so. And I know, I, you know, I've been guilty of this. My family has been guilty of this. But yeah, I think, I think a lot of us tend to fall into that deception. Um, one place that I've, that I've seen it lately is I, we have kids that are um, in kinder, uh, youngest is in kindergarten, our oldest is in second grade. So they're starting to get into that. As are my kids. Yes, I know. <laughs> so they're starting to get into that, that period where, you know, you want them involved in things. Yeah. You know, whether it's sports, um, you know, we did, we did soccer in the fall and we're doing wrestling right now. Um, you know, we got the the uh, sheet for wrestling that, that talked about the program, and you know they they have meets every other every other weekend, and they you know they said well, we encourage you to get them involved in these open meets, these you know open enrollment meets that you can get them involved in on the off weekends, and we encourage you to do this and do that. You know they're they're six and eight. You know I um, they've never wrestled before. We're just trying to, you know, see if it's something they like. You yeah. know, we we don't want them. We're not. We don't have Olympic aspirations or anything. But I think that's that's the kind of pressure that exists in the culture where if you're if you're going to do anything, you have to be you have to be great at it. You have to excel at it. You know, and we want them to learn to work hard. Um, if they're if they're going to commit to something like this, we want them to do well. You know, but um, we want to. I think we need to actively resist that that pressure to um, to be busy like that, to get them involved in in everything, and, and yeah, that level of commitment. Um, I think uh, maybe there's a there's a time for that and a place sure, for that. Sure, sure. But yeah, when you when you talked about how. You know, whenever we are really wrapped up in busyness, you know, just how that affects our spiritual journey. And so do you want to talk a little bit about how you have seen busyness really produce spiritual battle in your own heart? Right, right. Um, <clears throat> I think I think busyness produces uh, produces stress primarily. Um, it produces, um, fear, you know, fear that we're not, we're not pulling everything together and managing life the way that we're supposed to be. You know, I know that's what it, what it produces in, in my heart. Um, so then it, it produces this, just this desire that, that I need to strive. I need to strive more. I need to do better. I need to do more, you know, um, it produces this feeling that it's never enough, you know, no matter what you do, it's never enough. It's never good enough. Um, and we're not, we're not at, we're not at peace, you know? Um, I think, uh, you know, Paul talks about, Paul talks about striving and he talks about working, but he obviously he's doing that of, from a place where he is, he is at peace. He has that abiding peace and that abiding joy. Um, so it's, I I guess it's keep, it's keeping first things first. It's keeping that relationship with the Lord first. Um, but yeah, if, if we're doing it in our own strength, um, if I'm doing it in my own strength, um, it produces exhaustion, fear, anxiety. Um, for me, anxiety leads to depression, Mm -hmm. you know, um, it usually comes in the form of anxiety first. And then when I'm, when I'm, you know, going in my own strength for, for, certain amount of time, you know, that, that turns to, oh, I'm not, I'm not doing anything right. I'm not, I'm not, uh, checking all these boxes that I want to check. Um, you know, it's just so, it's so performance based. Right. You know? And that's not, that's not the gospel. You right. Know? I, I drew the analogy earlier to, you know, when Jesus in, in Mark 11, where he's talking about, uh, the fig where he sees the fig tree mm-hmm. and the fig tree looks like it. It has all these full branches on it and it looks like it should be producing fruit, but it's 
barren. Right. And, and the analogy of that to Jerusalem or Israel at that time, where mm-hmm. you had the chief priests who were, you know, saying all these big lengthy prayers, but they were far from God. And, right. and I think that's the warning for us today is, okay, so even if you're not super busy with worldly things, you know, with basketball practices and all this other stuff, you can be super busy with church things right. and still be far from the gospel and still be far from God. Right. And so I think that's where the spiritual battles have been so effective is we have this idea as if we're just busy, then that is where we're most productive and we have no time for rest and we're busy to the point of causing harm to our families, to our wives and to our kids. And so do you think that we can actually grow in our faith as Christians if we're not taking time to pause and rest? Right. Yeah. I think the simple answer is, is no, you know, the the growth, growth is not going to come. Um, you know, I, yeah, I think, I think there's a, you know, there's an order of things that, that God has set up, obviously it's the order all through creation. But when it comes to, to our responsibility and busyness, um, you know, I think we, we need to let, we need to let God be God. You know, Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a, it's a subtle thing, you know, I don't know. And I think of, um, I think of, uh, you know, Mary and Martha is one of the classic examples where, um, Martha is, is busy. She's, she's getting all these things ready for, for Jesus and trying to serve. Um, and she's doing that, you know, there's good intentions, sure. you know, she, she wants to love Jesus. She wants to serve him. Um, and then she gets upset with Mary, of course. And, and Jesus says, you know, that Mary has chosen the better, the better path, the better portion, you know, that, um, you're, you're anxious about many things, but only one thing is necessary, you know, and that's mm-hmm. to sit, that's to sit at the feet of Jesus and, and, and learn from him and be, um, you know, be a disciple. Um, and yeah, I think when we are, um, when we are out there and we're doing things in our own strength, even good things, you know, we're not, we're not connected to the, we're not connected to the vine, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's, it's God that brings the growth, you know, right. he's the one that brings spiritual growth in our own hearts. He's the one that produces fruit in our, in our work, in our ministry. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, you know, I can, I can accomplish some things on my own strength. Mm-hmm. You know, you see people doing it everywhere. Um, accomplishing, accomplishing a lot and in, in from a worldly perspective, but it's not, it's not, a, it's not eternal. It, right. it means nothing in the grand scheme of things. It's going to be, you know, just swept away, um, in the future, you know? And, uh, yeah, the only way to produce, you know, real fruit, fruit that lasts is to, to be, um, yeah, to be filled with the Holy spirit and to, to allow God to work through you, you know, yeah. and that can be, I know that can be a subtle, it's a tricky thing. We but so, it's so major too. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So one of the things that you are passionate about is you, you talk a lot, you know, in our conversations with each other about building cultures and communities of encouragement and of discipleship. And wh- where do you think we are as a, as a church in, in doing that? And are we relying on the spirit and on God is, is he the mission of that or has that even been hijacked by our own des- desires and, and wants? Right. Yeah. I mean, speaking, I guess, speaking from my own, ex- you know, my own experience, um, you know, I see, I think one of the things that we fall into in the church is um, thinking that we have to we want to look good on the outside, you know, um, and, and kind of putting on a show when we go, when we go to church and when we're around, um, other Christians, um, 
so I think I think that's just so important that we we don't hide we don't hide our brokenness. Mm. You know, I've seen that a lot in my past where, and I think a lot of us are, are are struggling with that or suffering with that right now, where we have we have sins, we have things that we're struggling with, but we think if I share this, you know, if I share this with the church, they're gonna they're gonna judge me. Um, whether that's true or not, um, I think I think it's important for for leaders in the church to to be real about their own struggles. You know, um, when we when we do small groups at our home or, or lead Bible studies or whatever, that's one. That's something we try to we try to model is that openness and say, hey, we've we've struggled. We've we've had these struggles with our marriage. You know, personally, I've struggled with with addiction. You know, there there's just these different battles that we fought, and I think that creates a safe space where people feel like, oh, okay, you know, they've been through this. I can I can share this as well. Um, I feel like I got a little bit off on a yeah, tangent, yeah. but <laughs> um, what was the question again? <laughs> so, so are we doing well at discipling or are we getting too sucked into the busyness? Because in, in my experience, I would say if you're overly busy without being intentional, mm-hmm. there's no room for discipleship. And so you can't right. have, you know, you're you're only thinking of, you know, these Bible studies or in-home studies as a dot on the calendar. Right. And it's like, okay, well, we have this on Monday, this on Tuesday, Bible study Wednesday. It just becomes a dot and it's not an intentional thing. So right. have we been doing well as a church from from your experience and, and what you guys are going through? Yeah. How are we? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a good point. If it's if if a small group or bible study or whatever you're going to if it's just if you're just checking a box you know if you're if you're in that um you know obsession with accomplishing things and 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 busyness then you are not um you're not going there for a relationship you're not going there really for growth um and yeah i think that that is a place where where the church um, has a lot of room, has a lot of room to grow. Um, yeah. And when, when you're, when you're overly busy, not only do you not have time for relationship with, with God, with Jesus, but you don't have time to form, um, to form lasting, to form deep relationships with other people where you are able to, to be real with one another, where you're able to know each other's lives and know each other's struggles so that you're able to speak, to speak truth to one another, you know, sometimes, sometimes encouragement and sometimes hard truths that people need to hear. Um, if you don't have those type of relationships, you can't do that. And if you don't have time, you don't make time for relationship, you're not going to build a relationship where that, where that can happen. Yeah. Do you- one thing that I've talked about and and one thing that I've just experienced is we kind of have put the gospel to the side um, in the sense of we have all of this stuff going on and we're super busy or we're struggling with something and we don't see how the gospel speaks truth or mm. conquers that sin. Right. And so how how do we in our busyness, like how do we pause and, you know, it, the, I forget who came up with the phrase, but it's kind of, you, you begin to speak the gospel to yourself. Right. How do we, if we don't realize that we're overly busy and that we're not living out the gospel, how do we get back on track? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. I mean, I think yeah, we, we need to, I guess, first of all, you know, we, we've talked about this. We need to, we need to have a gospel, obviously, that's more than just the way I get to heaven. Mm. You know, um, it is, it, you know, one of the, I think one of the most, most precious truths to me is that I'm, I'm adopted into God's family. I'm, I'm his child, mm. you know, and, and he looks at me with, with, a, with, with, a love that's so much greater and more pure than the love that I have for my own children. Right. You know, and I think that, 
you know, that is, uh, that penetrates everything that we do. You know, I, I don't have to, I don't have to strive to accomplish all these things to be acceptable, um, to the father. I'm already accepted. I'm already fully accepted in him. There's, there's no more con there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ, you know? Um, there's, there's love and there's forgiveness and there's grace. Um, so yeah, I think that, I think that without that, without that, um, a fuller understanding of what, what the gospel means and what it means to be, to be in Christ, you know, I'm going to be striving. I'm, I'm, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to experience, uh, the, the growth, the spiritual growth in my life that I want to see. Yeah. yeah. One, one of the things you mentioned earlier was, you know, not hiding in our brokenness. Mm -hmm. And I think that has been a huge thing, especially in light of, you know, we're still coming out of, you know, COVID. And I think, I think COVID didn't necessarily create a whole lot of stuff. It more or less just revealed a lot of right. problems and, and struggles that we've been going through. Um, and, and so one thing, and I, I'd love to hear your, your kind of take on it. Um, and we might have to do it at the, at the top after the on air break, okay. but repentance, the number of people whom I've seen look at the look at the Christian way of life and, and kind of like what you just said, they see, oh, well, this is a way that I can get to heaven. Mm. And but you can't get to heaven. And, and I would argue you can't truly come to faith in Christ without repentance you, because it says repent. You have to turn away from your sin. You have to abandon it. Not that you'll be perfect in doing that. Right. But then you trust in the faith that God has given you. And and that's a whole dynamic that I'd love to get your thoughts on how how do you see repentance playing a part in healing the brokenness that we have or that we experience. But I want to talk about that after we talk about new pillar marketing. So Chris is part owner or full, fully owner uh, of New Pillar Marketing, uh, which is a website and branding company based out of Central Ohio. Correct. Correct. Yes. And so their their mission is to see small businesses thrive and and really be able to compete with those medium and large size companies that have those beautiful looking websites because Chris is able to produce and I can personally vouch for Chris's work. We use him on pretty much all of our website work that we do for visual element media. And he's also helping out with Love Local's website as well. And so if you have any uh, questions, feel free to reach out to Chris. We have all of his information attached uh, below the video on YouTube, or you can find it on lovelocalpa.com. So that is New Pillar Marketing for all of your web uh, and digital branding needs. So back to our question here. Yeah. Repentance. How does repentance and turning, acknowledging that we need to turn away from that sin? Because the the anxiety, the the depression, the the pride, the selfishness, all of that is still sin. It's all sin that we need to turn away from. Right. But there is shame in that. There there is a there is a desire to want to hide it. Right. Hiding and repenting are different things. Yeah. And so do you want to talk about how, how you've seen that working in your life? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think the tendency when we see something, when we see something ugly in ourselves, we see that sin um, is, is to want to hide it um, and to pretend that it's not as bad um, as we, you know, we know, we really know it is um, to pretend that it's, it's, um, you know, to minimize it, uh, and to, uh, you know, to just stay busy <laughs> because yeah. then we don't have to think about it. Then we don't have to feel it. Um, but I think, yeah, I think the first part of repentance is, is really looking at that sin and seeing it as, um, as ugly as, uh, you know, and not being afraid to look at it, yeah. you know, to stop and look at it and see it for what it is. And that then, then I think it's something that, 
um, I don't know. Once, once I do that, um, how can I not want to be rid of it? You right. know, and, and that, that produces a willingness for me to take those steps, uh, to, to turn away from it, to, to first of all, pray and ask God for forgiveness and ask him to change my heart and then to bring others into that process and say, Hey, I'm, I'm struggling with this. I need some help. Will you pray for me? Can we, you know, whatever that, whatever that looks like, um, you know, but to, um, yeah, cause repentance is, is an action, you yeah. know, and, and maybe sometimes it's just, it's just, um, praying and asking God for forgiveness, you know, and asking him to help you turn away from it. But for me, a lot of the time it's most effective when I, when I invite others into that process yeah. with me. Well, I, I think too, and we, we've, we've kind of had this conversation off, um, off the offhand or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, off the record, I guess. Right. <laughs> um, you know, anxiety is something that, that I struggle with and, and you've mentioned that you struggle with it as well. Mm -hmm. And I think for people who, who do have anxiety issues, um, because it is an issue, uh, you know, if, greatly affects different parts of our lives and it affects everyone in different ways. Right. But I think if part of, for me at least, and I'll, I'll let you speak to your own side of things, but if I don't have someone else with me, those anxious thoughts are just going to duplicate and they are just going to continue to pile up until it just brings on a full blown panic attack. Right. Um, and and that has been something for me that if I don't bring someone in, whether it's my wife or a friend, uh, specifically a friend who follows Jesus and understands, right. you know, how to speak the gospel into what I am, you know, having anxiety about. Without that, I, I, I don't see any hope. You know, I don't see hope in the future. I don't see hope for anything mm -hmm. if if this is the best it's going to be or that anxiety is eventually going to permanently cripple me. Right. So what have been, you know, you kind of talked about bringing someone in, but, but kind of what has been your experience in seeing if you don't bring someone in? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you don't, um, you know, you sometimes when, when you're in, uh, this has been my experience when I'm in the, the grip of anxiety, it's hard to even pray. Yeah. You know, you're trying to pray, but you, you know, no, they're not, but you feel like your prayers are just bouncing off and you know, they're, they're not. Um, and I know, you know, we know that I know that God still hears them, but it, I think, I think that's why he wants us to live in community. I think that's why he wants us to rely on one another because when you do bring that other, when you do bring somebody else in, when you share that with somebody else, yeah, they're able to, to, to minister to you or to speak to you in a way that can kind of cut through that a lot more, yeah. you know? Um, and, and then, um, you know, and then I find I'm able to, once I'm out of the, I don't know, just out of the, the craziness of, my head of the anxiety a lot of the time. Uh, and I take, you know, do the, go on that journey with somebody else. Then I'm able to, to pray and to bring it to the Lord and, um, to work through those things. But I think a lot of the time it takes, it takes, uh, somebody else to kind of get you out of that state of mind. If that makes sense. Yeah. And so to bring things kind of full circle, full circle here, how, how do we begin developing these kinds of communities where, where you have a group of people whom you trust, whom they're not just pouring into you, but you are pouring into them. You make time for each other. Like that is the mm -hmm. priority. It's not, oh, well, my kids have a soccer game or, oh, well, we're doing this thing. No, it is a priority to get together, to pray, to gospel each other, disciple each other. How, how do we, how do we do that? How, how, how can you make it a priority? How do you step back from your busyness mm -hmm. in order to step into community? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, I think the first thing in 
building those types of communities is that that I have I have to decide this is important for me and I'm willing to I'm willing to um, be real with people even when it's uncomfortable even when I might be judged you know I'm willing to um, to say to say no to busyness you know I'm willing to make decisions maybe my kids don't need to be in that sporting event um, you know even in business maybe I don't maybe I don't need to go after that client you know mm-hmm. maybe maybe that's not that important you know um, and and then I think uh, um, yeah so I need to I need to model that first I need to make that important in my own life um, and I think uh, you know then I think people people see that um, and want to be a part of that um, and, and are willing to open up because you've opened up first. Um, and you know, as I'm, as I'm saying that I'm seeing places in my own life where I'm not, where I'm not doing that perfectly. You know, I need to do a little bit better, but I need to take that to the Lord. Um, but yeah. Do you think that in, in our current context of, you know, not just the holiday season, but as, the world around us seems to continue getting more chaotic and more away from God. At least I have seen the spirit working in people's heart to desire community more. Right. But they just don't know where to get it. And so do you see that in, in, in you know, where where you're gathering and, and the people that you're in relationship with? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, yeah, I think, you know, the whole COVID thing and, and kind of we're feeling, we're feeling that separation from each other more, you know, more acutely. And, and people are, people are starting to see, starting to see the value of community and, and, and desiring that, you know, obviously that's a desire that, that God has put in our hearts. Um, and I think it's getting harder and harder for people to ignore, ignore that desire, you know, um, as things out there in the world continue to be chaotic and difficult. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I- People are looking for some kind of peace. They're just looking for Mm -hmm. something or someone to give them comfort. And and I think that there is, there's good in that, but relying on Jesus to be the one that's providing that for you is going to be what ultimately gives you eternal hope and eternal peace. So Chris, thanks so much for joining us on the podcast today. Really appreciate it. Hope you and your family have a good holiday you too, and Scott. a very yeah. nice Christmas coming up soon. Uh, that's all the time we have for today. Again, thank you to Chris for joining us here on the podcast. Um, if you would, please subscribe. You can find us on YouTube and the website will be coming out soon. And so you can find us there as well. This is Mission of Likeness and only on Love Local. See you next time.